Time for our complete EM review for US Emily and Shelf. Super high yield, covering topics such as bites and stings, poisons and overdoses, burns and trauma, and more. So let's begin, starting with bites and stings. Question 1. A 29-year-old female zookeeper got drunk at night while roaming the premises of the zoo. One of the animals bit her. Now, a week later, she has a fever, axillary lymph tendinopathy, and a 6-centimeter round maculopapular lesion with central ulceration. What bit her? Well, let's see. A tiger? Probably not. We probably would know if she got bitten by a tiger. And same thing goes for hippos. You know there are more deaths a year by hippos than by tigers? So we kind of anyway already gave it away in the title, Bunny Bites, and that's exactly what bit her. A bunny. And so she developed infection with Francisella tularensis, which is seen in hunters and those in contact with bunnies. It wasn't a dog, because first of all, dogs are not at zoos, and second of all, dog bites lead to infection with Pastorella, which is much more rapid and life-threatening. And this is unlikely cat scratch disease, because in Bartonella hensile, we don't see lesions with ulceration. Question 2. Human Bites. A 34-year-old woman is brought to the ED from prison a few days after punching her prison guard in the mouth. There is prominent erythema over the fourth MCP joint and passive motion elicits extreme pain. There are no foreign bodies or fractures. What's the next step? So here we have a fist punched to the teeth. Now there are signs of an infected joint. So are we going to go with arthrocentesis like we do at the knee? Nah, you can't do arthrocentesis on a knuckle joint. Rather, you have to go with surgery in order to provide surgical irrigation and debridement followed by intraoperative IV antibiotics such as ampicillin sulbactam. Question 3. Cat bites. A 22-year-old man comes to the ED after sustaining several cat bites. The man states that the cats have been stressed out ever since they had discovered that they can get COVID-2. F-Cove. What's the next step? So besides the psychiatric assessment, which antibiotic is best for him? Amoxicillin clavulinate. Augmentin. For cat bites, we give amoxicillin clavulinate. Same thing for dog bites. And same thing for non-complicated human bites. We give moxicillin clavulinate. Azithromycin, that's for cat scratch disease caused by Bartonella hensile. That we see mainly in immunocompromised patients. And we see a papule at the scratch site or the bite site and regional adenopathy. Question 4. Dog bites. A 21-year-old man comes to the ED after sustaining a dog bite. He had been throwing his medical school textbooks at his sister's nice and healthy dog. The point of that is, is that it probably doesn't have rabies. No reason to assume so. Antibiotics are given. What's next set? post-exposure prophylaxis, or observe the dog? And the answer is, observe the dog for 10 days because we only give post-exposure prophylaxis if the animal cannot be observed, for example, in the case of a dog or a cat, or the animal cannot be euthanized for testing in the case of a non-pet, a bat, raccoon, or a skunk. And remember, in these cases, we give tetanus prophylaxis if the patient is incompletely vaccinated or the last dose was more than five years ago. Scorpion bites. What are the manifestations of scorpion sting toxicity? And the answer is, fasciculations of the extremities. Choice B, that refers to a brain herniation. Now, these stings aren't usually dangerous, but if CNS symptoms occur, which they do rarely, we require antivenom, scorpion-specific Fab 2, equine antivenom. And just so you know, these scorpions, the dangerous ones, are found in Southwest US. Question five, snake bites. A patient endures a snake bite. That is, we see a puncture wound with two fangs. There is erythema and swelling, but labs are normal. What's the next step? So if the snake bite does not lead to abnormal labs or systemic symptoms, we just go with observation for 12 to 24 hours. Choice B, Crofab, that's given, again, if we see abnormal labs or systemic symptoms. Anivip, the Fab 2 fragment, is only if we know it's a known rattlesnake that caused the bite. Question six, spider bites. Which describes a brown recluse spider bite? A red plaque or papule with central clearing or necrotic eschar? And the answer is both of them. In 10% of cases, the red plaque or papule can develop into a necrotic eschar. It doesn't usually progress to systemic symptoms, but in rare cases it does. Question seven, what's the treatment for a brown recluse spider bite? And the answer is ice wound care and says for pain. Steroids and tetracyclines are not helpful. An immediate surgical debridement is only if we see progressive necrosis. Question eight, mouse bites. What is the management for a mouse bite? And the answer is local wound care. Mouse bites are not dangerous. Unless they carry leptospira, they may come up. So if a patient develops fever, headache, and vomiting, you know it's probably from leptospira, and we may need antibiotics. Question nine, bees and wasps. Bees and wasps cause what type of hypersensitivity reaction? We know this, type one. That's why we give antihistamines and steroids. Question 10, shellfish. A 36-year-old woman who was a radiologist was sailing on a boat while interpreting radiology images. She stuck her hand into the water, oblivious that her hand had a bleeding wound. The next day, she develops bullous skin lesions and necrotizing fasciitis. What's the treatment? So she got infection with Vibrio vulnificus, the cousin of Vibrio cholera. That's why we see this gram-negative rod over here. The treatment is IV ceftriaxone and doxycycline. Infection with Vibrio vulnificus leads to necrotizing fasciitis 
and infection is especially seen in patients with liver disease. But with surgical debridement, if we see lots of necrosis. Poisons and overdoses. Carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide poisoning causes a left shift or a right shift on the hemoglobin curve. Remember, right shift is when we have easier time delivering to the tissues. Left is when we have a more difficult time. And the carbon monoxide poisoning, we have a more difficult time, so there'll be a left shift. And the reason is because carbon monoxide has a strong affinity for hemoglobin. It attaches to hemoglobin, knocking off an oxygen, but the remaining oxygen molecules can't get to the tissues because they don't want to leave hemoglobin anymore. Carbon monoxide causes them to bind more tightly to hemoglobin, and therefore there'll be a left shift. Treatment for carbon monoxide poisoning is 100% oxygen face mask. Question 11, another carbon monoxide poisoning question. Chronic carbon monoxide poisoning, for example, in an unvented secret underground layer where we see fire, this can cause chocolate colored blood. Now that's methemoglobinemia. Polycythemia vera, that's a due to a JAK2 mutation. Rather, secondary polycythemia. And the reason is because in carbon monoxide poisoning, there's tissue hypoxia. The kidneys produce more erythropoietin due to the hypoxia, which stimulates bone marrow to pump out more red blood cells, and that causes the polycythemia. Question 12, cyanide poisoning. Cyanide toxicity is treated with, and by the way, when do we see cyanide toxicity? For example, in a patient on nitroposide, and he has renal impairment. So this is treated with, which of the following? And the answer is vitamin B12A, hydroxycobalamin, i.e. the precursor for cobalamin, vitamin B12. This molecule binds cyanide ions, forming a molecule which is renally excreted. Hydroxycobalamin may or may not be given with sodium thiosulfate. And by the way, if we suspect cyanide toxicity, don't wait to get a level. That takes a really long time to get. Just treat the patient with vitamin B12A. And here's just my little mnemonic for cyanide toxicity. You can take a look where we see the sideways knight for cyanide who has a headache because it causes headache. And he has this lemon with him who's really sad for lactic acidosis. But good thing he has his pet, the hydrocobra for hydroxycobalamin, which is the treatment for the sideways knight for cyanide. Met hemoglobinemia, cyanosis, tachypnea, and chocolate colored blood after exposure to dapsone or local anesthetic. So this is methemoglobinemia, seen in exposure to dapsone or local anesthetic. Methemoglobinemia in general is seen in hospital settings. So in this condition, what will be normal? And the answer is the PaO2. It's falsely normal, but the PaCO2 is going to be low due to the tachypnea which we see in the patient. The reason why the PaO2 is normal in methemoglobinemia is because PaO2 measures dissolved oxygen. But in methemoglobinemia, the problem is that iron is oxidized to ferric, the ferric state, the tree state, or the three state, resulting in impaired oxygen transportation. But dissolved oxygen is unaffected, and that's why the PaO2 will be falsely normal. Treatment for methemoglobinemia is methylene blue and vitamin C. And here's just my little mnemonic for methemoglobinemia. Here we have the messed up green goblin Ima. Ima means mother. She's insane, and she's holding chocolate because she loves chocolate, but to remind us of chocolate-colored blood. There is a lady standing next to her saying, Hey, your paw is surprisingly normal. The paw over here is surprisingly normal. Paw for PaO2. Question 14, arsenic poisoning. So arsenic toxicity involves which of the following? Garlic breath or hypohyperpigmentation? And the answer is both of these. It depends on we talk about the acute stage or the later phase. We treat arsenic poisoning with dimercaprol. Here's my little mnemonic for arsenic poisoning. You can take a look, but just remember that the R that's sick is for arsenic. He's vomiting after he was exposed to pesticides and pressure-treated wood, and now he has garlic breath. Turning off the prolonged QT over here. Question 15, Tylenol toxicity. When are LFTs the highest in Tylenol toxicity? And the answer is after four days. After one day, we just see nausea and vomiting. After two days, we see hepatotoxicity. And after four days, that's when the hepatotoxicity, i.e. the elevated LFTs, peak. Question 16, how do you treat Tylenol toxicity if within four hours of ingestion? And the answer is activated charcoal, only within four hours of ingestion, best within the first hour. Question 17, what steps should be taken four hours post ingestion? Assuming we don't know exactly how much was ingested, and the answer is acetaminophen level. Plot in an RM nomogram, which helps determine the treatment with N-acetylcysteine. And by the way, this has no effect after two days. Tylenol mnemonic, tied to all. He's tied to all for Tylenol. Tied to all, you need charcoal. TCA toxicity, TCA overdose, which leads to anticholinergic symptoms, cardiac toxicity, and CNS symptoms is treated with sodium bicarb. We have no idea why it works, I mean, we try to explain it. Something to do with the fact that we're overcoming TCA-induced sodium channel blockade. Question 19, methanol toxicity. Which conditions describe methanol toxicity? And the answer is confusion and vision defects. Formic acid-induced optic neuritis is seen in methanol toxicity. Confusion in calcium oxalate zone, that's seen in ethylene glycol toxicity. Confusion and no acidosis, that's seen with rubbing alcohol. Now, we treat methanol toxicity with fomepizole. 
Hemodialysis is severe, but full vision recovery is unfortunately rare. Now you don't need to know this, but it's just a cool fact that they add this molecule over here, denatonium benzoate, to wind washer fluid is the most horrific taste known to science, and that's why people aren't drinking wind washer fluid as much as they used to for suicide. And here's just a mnemonic on methanol toxicity. Met at the mall for methanol. This boy and girl met at the mall. He brought wind washer fluid on the date. They both developed blurry vision. And she's a bit confused why he brought wind washer fluid on the date. Question 20, marijuana intoxication. Marijuana intoxication causes increased appetite, slow responses, dry mouth, and which of these? Both of these. It usually causes tachycardia. That's seen in mild marijuana intoxication, but in severe, it may lead to bradycardia because of its parasympathetics take over. Question 21, beta blocker toxicity. Beta blocker toxicity involves bradycardia, hypotension, and hypoglycemia. Beta blocker toxicity causes hypoglycemia due to direct inhibition of hepatoglucose production and pancreatic glucagon release. Question 22, organophosphate. I always think of organophosphate as like the wet one. It causes wet symptoms. Organophosphate poisonings, such as seen in a field worker, a terrorist attack, or pediatric ingestion, is treated with atropine, then pralidoxime. Pralidoxime supplies for both the muscarinic and nicotinic effects of acetylcholine. And remember to always remove the clothes of the patient and irrigate the skin as soon as possible. Organophosphate toxicity, as I mentioned, involves salivation, lacrimation, urination, and defecation. Defecation, i.e. diarrhea. 23. Which can cause anticholinergic toxicity? All of the above. You could take a look at this list over here. Others include doxylamine, scopolamine, and clomipramine. And what are the symptoms of anticholinergic toxicity? Dry as a bone, blind as a bat, they have trouble seeing because of the reduced wetness, full as a flask because they can't pee, and hot as a hair because they may have a difficult time dissipating the heat. Question 24. Caustic agents. A patient ingests a caustic agent and now has heavy drooling, pain, and dysphagia. What else is associated with this condition? So this is caustic agent toxicity. This would generally not cause altered consciousness. This leads to an increased risk of esophageal squamous cell carcinoma. Now, if the patient is stable and has no evidence of perforation, the next step is endoscopy, especially within the first 20 hours, to assess the severity of the injury and direct the next step in management. Question 25, lead poisoning, i.e. microcytic anemia, GI symptoms, and CNS symptoms. What is the treatment? And the treatment is chelators, succimer, EDTA, dimercaparol. Remember, dimercaparol is also the treatment for arsenic poisoning. And here we see a picture of the basophilic stippling seen in lead poisoning. And finally, remember, if the finger stick capillary measurement, which is the quick one, is negative, we get a venous lead level, because the capillary one has lots of false negatives. 26. Opioid intoxication. What's the triad of opioid intoxication? Pinpoint pupils, reduced consciousness, and respiratory depression. We give naloxone, even if there's just a suspicion alone. Because you don't need to be too worried. Naloxone is not that dangerous. Opioid withdrawal. Nausea, vomiting, insomnia, pyloerection, i.e. goosebumps, yawning. These symptoms begin how long after the withdrawal? 4 to 12 hours after the last dose. They peak at 24 to 48, but they begin 4 to 12 hours after the last dose. And we treat opioid withdrawal with buprenorphine or low-dose methadone. Another 27, mercury poisoning. Mercury toxicity, gold miner, child playing with thermometer. This resembles pheochromocytoma. Here's my little mnemonic. Well, not really a mnemonic, just a picture. A guy getting nervous with sweating and agitation on mercury, because that's what mercury poisoning leads to. 28, iron toxicity. Acute iron toxicity, such as a child ingesting mom's prenatal vitamins who now has abdominal pain. This is treated with deferoxamine. Remember, iron toxicity leads to anion gap metabolic acidosis. 29, salicylate toxicity. That is progressing despite sodium bicarb. This is managed with hemodialysis. We first give sodium bicarb, but if there's no response, we go with hemodialysis. Charcoal is only useful in the first two hours, but not, by the way, in confused patients because of the aspiration risk. And another indication for hemodialysis in salicylate toxicity is CNS symptoms. If we see CNS symptoms, we go straight for hemodialysis. Question 30, magnesium toxicity. Magnesium toxicity, especially in patients with renal impairment, again, because they can't get rid of the magnesium, causes weakness, decreased reflexes, respiratory depression, and which of the following? Hypotension and bradycardia. I like to think that there's low hippo over here for hypotension under the magnet for hypermagnesemia. Magnesemia causes hypotension and bradycardia. That's why this hippo over here has the braids for bradycardia. And remember, magnesium in the body should be at around 2, from 1.5 to 2.5. All right, now let's move on to miscellaneous EM topics. All right, now let's move on to miscellaneous EM topics. I have to admit, I'm going to go really fast through these slides, but here we go. A patient, 43-year-old lady in a car accident, has spontaneous breathing, obeys commands, but has confused speech. So the only thing that's off is confused speech. What's her Glasgow score? So it's 14, and we'll explain why. We have to take into account eyes, which is normal over here, motor response, which is normal over here, but she has confused speech. 
So she moves down from five to four. So instead of 15, she gets a 14. My responses have four. Motors is, motors is six and mouth is five. Question 32, a child is brought in with the following burn. Is this a concern? And the answer is yes, that's a cigarette burn. Cigarette burns are fairly common in child abuse. We see an eight millimeter to 10 millimeter lesion in diameter with a hypopigmented center and a hyperpigmented periphery. And you can read about child abuse burns over here. 33, a backstabbing that leads to these symptoms over here. That's seen in brown Saccard syndrome. 34, a two-year-old girl develops sudden onset respiratory distress and cough after playing under the dining room table. So it's likely that she swallowed something. What's the next step? We want to get a bronchoscopy to take the thing out. The bronchoscopy both confirms and removes the object. 35, a 46-year-old woman with no significant medical history is brought to the ED with a 24-hour history of respiratory acidosis, and she has PaOCO2 of 58. She has weakness of her neck and upper extremities as well as blurred vision. What's the cause? So this is botulism, diaphragm paralysis, and you can take a look at botulism over here. It doesn't usually affect consciousness or cause fever. Question 36, a patient comes to the ED with an acute asthma exacerbation. What's the treatment? Bronchodilator and steroid. A short-acting bronchodilator and an oral or IV steroid such as dexamethasone. 37, besides reversing anticoagulation and maintaining ICP in a patient with hemorrhagic stroke, what must be carefully controlled? And the answer is blood pressure. Now examples of medications that we use are, ni are nicardipine, esmolol, labetalol, and hydralazine. 38, frostbite initial management includes rewarming in warm water and wound care. This rewarming doesn't help. What's the next step? We want to go for an angiogram to see if perhaps there is a thrombosis which preventing the rewarming. An alternative to an angiogram is a technidium 99M scan. 39, a 70-year-old boy gets a headache after playing tennis. He has a high, high fever, hypotension, tachycardia, and history of antidepressants and antipsychotics. Muscle tone and reflexes are normal, so that rules out. So therefore, this is a heat stroke, and we want to give him a cold bath. In serotonin syndrome, we see hyperreflexia, and the other conditions we see rigidity. 40, a man has joint pain after scuba diving. What's the treatment? So he has the bends, and we treat the bends with hyperbaric oxygen. In type 2 decompression sickness, we would see CNS symptoms, the staggers, and we would see pulmonary symptoms in the chokes. 41, what's the treatment for cannabis hyperemesis syndrome, where we see repeated nausea vomiting, which improves with shower? The answer is IV fluids and antiemetics. 42, acute mountain sickness can progress to haste high altitude cerebral edema, and the definitive treatment is to get down from the mountain. We can give dexamethasone, however, in the meantime, to decrease the cerebral edema. 43, what's the treatment for coldness-induced hypothermia? Rewarming. Atropine doesn't help the bradycardia. 44, which opioids are safe in renal failure? And the answer is fentanyl, buprenorphine, and methadone. I tried to come up with a mnemonic for this, but I couldn't. So instead, I came up with the ones that they can't have. The eans, or tramadol. Morphine, meperidine, codeine. The eans they cannot have, or tramadol they cannot have. 45, atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response causing hemodynamic instability is treated with cardioversion. If we see instability, cardioversion. Question 46, vision threatening chemical burns are managed with irrigation for 30 minutes to two or more hours. 47, first step in suspecting Neisseria. Lumbar puncture, or not CT, and treatment for this condition should not be delayed for lumbar puncture if the suspicion is high due to significantly increased mortality. We give Venko for Empiric coverage and Ceftriaxone right away. 48, a 17-year-old woman engages in hockey and endures a direct blow to her flank. She now has a bruised left flank, which is very tender to palpation, but there's no hematuria. What's the next step? We still need to go to the CAT scan because we need to be worried about kidney injury. 49, a 30-year-old woman, woman, I guess she's two women's. No, just kidding, that was a mistake. Comes in with rapidly progressive motor and sensory deficits of her extremities bilaterally, MRI shows central T2 hyperintensity extending across two vertebrae, so this is transverse myelitis. The next step is steroids. Plasmapheresis only if there's no response to the steroids. 50, a three-week-old baby presents well in the history of bilious vomiting. He shows signs of dehydration. X-ray is normal. What's the next step? So we want to go with a GI series because we're worried about mid-gut volvulus, which presents in the first month of life. Could present in the first year, but usually in the first month of life.
78, worsening tachycardia, ipsilateral infiltrates, and hypoxia, and hypoxemia less than 24 hours after blunt thoracic trauma. So this is pulmonary contusion, and that's it. 79, post-concussion patients can return gradually to activities after two or more days. 80, if the patient spills coffee on himself and now has a superficial third first degree burn, there's erythema and pain, but lack of blistering, what's the next step? So wound care and moisturizer and they can go home. Prophylactic oral, oral antibiotics are actually never given. Even severe burns are not given. 81, a patient with an epidural hematoma and neurological dysfunction, what's the next step? So we want to get urgent hematoma evacuation because he has neurological dysfunction, we go right away. The serial CAT scans can be considered the hemorrhage is small and there are no symptoms. 82, a patient with suspected cervical spinal injuries in the prone position. He's wearing a helmet. What's the next step? Not to take off the helmet, but to roll the patient into the supine position. Do this ideally with at least four people. 83, a woman who is sexually assaulted should receive post-exposure prophylaxis with, and the answer is all of the above. Azithromycin for chlamydia, ceftriaxin for gonorrhea, and metronidazole for trick. And she's offered emergency contraception and HIV prophylaxis with tenofovir, emtricitabine, and raltegravir. 84, a man ingests a pill and develops euphoria, agitation, and psychosis. What was the drug? So, he ingests the pill and has these symptoms. I'm not sure if this is cocaine or ecstasy. Actually, I know it's for sure ecstasy, because you don't swallow cocaine, you sniff it. You inhale a powder. 85, treatment for lithium toxicity, CNS and GI symptoms is hemodialysis. Hemodialysis for lithium toxicity. There's no antidote. Hydrofluoric acid burns require irrigation and topical... Calcium gluconate gel, just something you gotta remember, calcium gluconate gel for hydrofluoric acid burns. 86, sexual intercourse followed by acute onset unilateral pelvic pain, Doppler shows normal flow. What's the diagnosis? So this is a ruptured cyst in which the ultrasound would show free fluid. That's how we diagnose it. We treat it with pain medicine. In ovarian torsion, we will not see normal flow on the Doppler. 87, a, a boy gets kicked in the groin by his girlfriend. Now he has hematuria. What's the next step? And the answer is, Retrograde urethrography to assess for urethral injury. If there is urethral injury, we would see extravasation of the contrast. 88. A person cuts off his arm with an axe and then regrets it. What should he do? He should place the arm in saline moistened gauze and sealed in a bag and the bag placed in a container of ice water. We don't place ice directly on his, on his amputated limb because that would cause a frostbite. 89. In one month old with suspected bacterial meningitis and a closed fontanelle with papilledema, what should be done first? Antibiotics and dexamethasone. We do not wait for the antibiotics and steroids for the lumbar puncture. That's only if we have a stable patient who has an open fontanelle. Question 90. What is the most common symptom of benzo overdose? And the answer is CNS depression, especially when combined with alcohol or opioids. 91. An important step in severe burn injury after wound cleansing and topical antibiotics is wound excision and grafting. The earlier you can do it, the better. IV antibiotics, as you mentioned, just like oral ones, are unhelpful. 92, which are concerning signs in a patient with severe burns? All of the above. Thrombocytopenia, low temperature, high temperature, and feeding intolerance are all concerning signs. We get cultures and give empiric antibiotics because here we have infection due to the burns. Burn sepsis. Common first-line agents for this are piperacillin, tazobactam, and vancomycin. Question 93, mortalities increased in burn patients who receive? The answer is parenteral nutrition. Enteral 1 is ideal and it reduces mortality. 94. High pressure injection injury, such as a solvent that enters the body at extreme pressure, is treated with debridement and fasciotomy, ideally within six hours. 95. A 13 year old boy with sickle cells diagnosed with osteomyelitis. What is the treatment? And the answer is clindamycin and ceftriaxone. Clindamycin can be considered in a regular patient with osteomyelitis. 96. A 21 year old woman was in a car accident. Blood pressure is low. Heart rate is high. So we're concerned. Flat neck veins, dullness, and percussion on the right side. So what happened over here? This is a hemothorax. That's why there's dullness of percussion, and we need to get a tube thoracostomy. Question 97. A child falls forward, I guess, on a bike handlebar who now has epigastric pain and bilious vomiting. That needs to be a concern for duodenal hematoma, and that's why the patient is vomiting. 98. The complete dermis and epidermis are involved in which type of burns? And the answer is third degree burns. For example, from a fire or a boiling grease. And the area is painless and white. I meant to write is painless and white. 99. Immediate fever after administration of halothane or succinylcholine. This is Malignant hyperthermia. 100. A, a woman weighing 75 kilograms with burns to her entire head. So the head is 9% of the body. So we've covered 9% of her body. Her entire left arm, that's another 9%. So, so far we have 18% and a small area on her stomach. Let's call it 2%. So we have 18% plus 2% requires how much fluid? So 4 times 75, because that's her weight, times 20, because we covered 20% of her body, that's 6,000. So we take this number and we divide it in half. And we give that 3,000 within the first eight hours, and we give the other within the next 16 hours. Now, just something to keep in mind in case it comes up on exam day is that although an adult, their head is 9% of their surface area, with a baby, you have to double this. It's 18% of their surface area because babies' heads are so big. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I apologize for the audio defect in the middle. Stay tuned for more and take care.